Hello YouTube! Today we are covering a topic requested by everyone's favorite Khajiit and wizard cat on my Discord. The drugs of Tamriel. This is a topic much requested over the years and I now finally decided to do it as I, really, as I was suddenly really interested in the topic. So without any further ado, let's just kick off with this video. So first of all, the most well-known drug of Tamriel, Skooma. We know that Skooma is the favorite drug of Tamriel and that there are a lot of Skooma addicts across Tamriel. But what exactly is Skooma? Skooma is a drug manufactured using, using refined moon sugar. It's extremely addictive and gets users all sorts of hallucinations and long-term use can actually cause severe mental issues for the user. We know that the drug is made out of moon sugar, a bit of nightshade and other some quite flammable substance we don't actually know the name of. However, in Skyrim we can see a far more potent version of skooma, called Redwater Skooma. It can be made using water from the blood spring, and it was actually used in the fourth era by some vampires to get addicts on a high so they could steal their blood with less resistance. There are also other forms of skooma found in Skyrim, one of which we will touch on later in this video. To consume skooma, one can smoke it with a special skooma pipe when it's been watered down a little. Or one can drink it in its pure liquid form, which is way stronger but has a, has a less, lo um, less long use. It has been banned by most governments throughout the ages, but this has not stopped people from using it since skooma has a large active smuggling network. One of the specific smuggle routes has between the city-state of Daggerfall in High Rock and the city of Vivek in Morrowind, which is actually also one of the longest roads you can travel on in uh, the Elder Scrolls, if you would have an, have an actual open terminal. We can actually see some drug dens in Skyrim in action and smuggling operations in action in Riften, Whiterun and some other places. For a lot of people, skooma smuggling and selling is a very lucrative business that has have made a lot of people in lore very rich. It has been said that the Dark Elves created Skooma long ago, but throughout history it's been most important to the Khajiit, since it has become ingrained in some of their rituals, in which it's used and controlled by the Moon Bishops. Skooma addict, uh, addiction has become a real menace within Khajiit culture, based on this ingrainment in culture. We know that it is really hard to withdraw from skooma addict addiction as witnessed by Jadar in Skyrim. It can cause bad paranoid hallucinations and can cause real violence. Some say skooma addiction is very uncurable, but we have seen some great examples of skooma curings, even through the simple means of just a healing potion in Skyrim. This means that whether the addiction can be cured or not is dependent on some factor we don't really know of. It could be one's character, one's physical strength, but also for example race. We know the Khajiit can handle a lot more skooma before getting addicted compared to other races, which actually causes for more addiction in Khajiit culture since they think, hey, we can handle more. So second, let's talk about sleeping tree sap, a drug that for the time being seems to be legal within the empire and also within an independent Skyrim, if that's the choice you made in the Civil War. This sap is actually one of the strongest narcotics in the game, taken from the sleeping tree in the White Run Plains. Whether there are more of these trees in Tamriel is very unknown, but I think that if there are, there are very few, and this, as this substance is very rare and very expensive, and very hard to come by. Plus I think its legality mostly comes from the fact that it's less well known than Skooman, and not fully in the sight of any government yet. Another part of it seems to be that it does not alter your mood or emotions, all it does is make you feel healthier and drowsy and makes you a bit slow. It's closer to something like aspirin or morphine and not really closer to a hard drug like skooma, which also causes changes in character. Some say that the sleeping tree, that actually is the origin of all the sleeping tree sap, might be an offspring of a history or one of the histories or the hist-like trees from the city of Umbriel but others say that it originated out of the eruption of the Red Mountain. Depending on the story you believe, this sap could actually be a strain of his sap, but for that to be true, the Argonians would have to be less susceptible to its effects, and that's not necessarily the case in Skyrim for as far as I know. So I doubt that it's his sap, but it could be another strain which also affects Argonians. Who knows, it might be. The conclusive answer that is that we don't know what it is exactly, other than its origins, we don't know its exact functions. 
Another drug that is less well known is a skooma-like substance that's called Balmora Blue. We encountered this drug only once during Skyrim's Thieves Guild questline. We know that it's a drug that is banned and that it's based on alcohol and moon sugar. The moon sugar of which causes the skooma-like effect. It only gets made in the city of Balmora and thus is very rare outside of that city. Even rarer outside of Morrowind. So in, the, in like a province like Skyrim or even further away, a, prom a province like High Rock, it is nearly impossible to come by. Next we go to the forest of Valenwood. There are local Bosmer there that have a drug called Buck Smoke, which gives the user a very exhilarated feeling. This is however a very peculiar drug, as it is not made of any plants. Due to the green pack that forbids the plant consumption for Bosmer that follows it, they had to find another drug. So this drug is instead not made out of plants, but made out of bugs, like caterpillars and little grubs. And then they smoke it from their bone pipes. It's no wonder that you actually rarely see this drug outside of Valenwood since nobody actually wants to do this and it's a quite primitive drug. But unless you have no other choice for it, like the Bosmer following the Green Pact, you can of course use it. Next we have an Argonian drug we know almost nothing about and it appears not that often in the franchise. It's called Daryl. It only appears a couple of times within the Elder Scrolls franchise, in the novels and in Elder Scrolls Online. In Elder Scrolls Online it's involved in an apothecary quest, but in the novel we get a little more info. It turns out that Daryl, in the Argonian language, literally means seeing everything in ecstasy. The drug comes from a snake, the Argonians called the Moon Adder. Its venom kills everything, except for Argonians. Argonians can survive a bite and when, it, when its bite injects the Daryl, it usually kills all, but the Argonians do not get killed and get weird visions that cause, that cause them to see everything in ecstasy. Which is why some of the Argonians actually seek their snakes out for pleasure. It's a drug that, after consumed, unfolds in stages. All stages of the drug are very different. And in certain stages it confuses the senses, like getting hallucinating sounds. But also you apparently see sounds, hear tastes, smell sights. It, it's a really weird drug that does all kind of things to your senses. And it kills everyone, but due to a certain agent in the Argonian blood, you can actually sustain it. If heavily worked upon, the venom can actually be used to create another drug we know even less about. And we don't even know a full name for the drug. It's said that this drug is used by the, ali by the elites in their ancient banca banquets during the dinner. Because they can make it so that it only affects taste and not the other senses. But again, we all know almost nothing about it. Now I know that this video is called the drugs of Tamriel, but I feel like two drugs from the oblivion realm of Shivering Isles actually deserve a short mention. As they can be taken from there to Tamriel. First of all there's Feldew. It's poisonous and it's a substance that's very addicting to the user. It's produced in the bodies of a large insect called Elytras that live in the Shivering Isles. And create a lot of euphoria in the user when used. However, this euphoria is, is short-lived and creates for huge withdrawal effects. This causes for people to have to keep consuming it, not to fall uh, back on those withdrawal effects, hence the addictiveness. The second drug is called Green Mode, which is basically another very powerful substance in the form of a powder from the Shivering, Shivering Isles. It's produced in the saplings of mushroom trees and as its unrefined form, but if refined, it's even more powerful. In overdoses it can lead to even explosion of the heart, but in small doses it can actually be quite useful. As it causes rapture, which can cause for improved night vision speed and endurance, but it also has its down effects. Later after the use you get blurry vision, decrease in intelligence, strength and speed. Well guys that was it, the drugs of Tamriel. I know that there are more drugs found in the Elder Scrolls universe, like the ones on the flying city of Umbriel, the problem is those are not from Tamriel, and I know that the last two are also not from Tamriel, but the fact that you could take them to Tamriel in any of the games, I felt like they deserved a mention. But with that said, we have actually reached the end of this video. I really, really, really hope that you liked it. If so, you can supp consider supporting me on Patreon. Why support me on Patreon? Well, you get your name at the end of every video and get instant access to my original soundtrack. 
But if you're not interested in that, you can of course always like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want personal contact with me, there is my Discord and Instagram in the description. I almost pay, uh, post nothing on Instagram lately, but I mean to change that. I really do. <laughs> I'm just really busy and I don't have much interesting to show on there. And with that said, I really hope to see you all in the next video. Uh, which I have also been working on simultaneously with this one. So don't expect a too long time before it gets uploaded. We'll see you all next time. Bye bye.